We all know that Neil Brown is really stubborn when it comes to changing players and playing younger talent. Over the last couple of days, I've been able to correspond with a couple of former players that have already transferred along with their families. One of these former players and their families have given me permission to share messages so long as I block out their names. In this video, we're going to go over some of these messages and dive into exactly what they're saying and decide if it's actually that big of a deal or just sour grapes. Stay tuned. What is up, Mountaineer Nation? College football fans and Big 12 fans, you have once again landed yourself at Mountaineer Paul Talks Football. So, while I was watching the West Virginia University men's basketball team take out Penn last night, I got an interesting couple of messages from two different sources that are tied to players that have transferred sometime in the last seven to ten months. Let's jump right in and start reading some of what these messages had to say. You may have to zoom in. Uh, I tried to get these at a sideways angle. It was just wasn't happening for me. I apologize, guys. Of the reasons Blank picked West Virginia was because we were assured he'd be treated fairly and developed. Plus, we love the dedication of the West Virginia fan base in a state that has no professional football team. Blank had offers from over 40 schools, but we chose West Virginia because they, blank, 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 and we're told there was going to be great potential for blank, 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 blank. He understood that playing time would be based on his performance in practice. However, in retrospect, we see that this was never the case. Instead, after almost six months in camp, players brought up from the JUCO in spring and fall were giving precedence, experienced trumped talent, and inexperience at the college level Personally, I think this approach was aimed at winning immediately, which would have been appreciated as long as they would have been successful on and off the field. And then this is where they'd ask me to keep this confidential as far as the names in this video. You also didn't want to hurt any teammates or former coaches or anything like that. But you guys say that we don't have any sources sometimes. And I just want you guys to see the kind of things. If I give my word to somebody, I'm going to keep it. There was also another family that had messaged me. That was a player that was also promised playing time, did not receive it, and even after having fought through an injury, was told not to redshirt, that they would be playing after the injury healed. They still didn't play. And this just goes on a theme we've seen with Neil Brown since his early days at West Virginia, outside of them taking the chance on the offensive line and developing, they did do that. But for the most part, during Neil Brown's tenure, we've seen it time and time again, he's had to have been beaten over the head with failure before he decides to make a change. Sometimes you have to play the younger players, the more talented players, over the experienced players. In some of these cases, some of the players that were brought in have been talked up. You guys remember over the summertime, we were told how good some of these junior college players were going to be, and they whiffed on almost every single one of them. And so out of stubbornness, almost it would seem, they've held on to some of these players and played them week in, week out, no matter what, no matter the consequences. And our young talent sat on the bench and watched it happen. And in another message I received, I was told that this person lost all confidence in themselves and almost quit the sport. That's what a coach can do. Now, I understand that there can be sour grapes in situations like this. I get that. Some of these families feel like their child should have, should have played. I get that. I do. It's not for me to judge whether or not there are sour grapes because I'm not close enough to the situation to make a determination. So all I'm doing is just showing you the plain facts of the situation, the messages that I've gotten, the conversations that I've had, and 
we can make a decision together on that situation. You guys can leave it down in the comments below. Another piece of proof. Today, during the Kansas State game, we saw Garrett Green play and play so, so well today. Who knows what could have happened if Neil Brown would have just bit the bullet and played him over Jarrett Dagey when we had those really good defenses the last couple of years. Man, it frustrates me to just think what could have been over the last couple of years. Maybe Garrett Green wasn't ready. I don't know. And so there's another thing against Neil Brown. And so in my mind, that's just yet another thing Neil Brown has chosen to be stubborn about during his time at West Virginia University. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching this short video. Just wanted to give you a little bit of intel and get your feedback on it. I appreciate you guys for stopping in and watching Mountaineer Paul Talks Football. This video is over. Mountaineer Paul is out. This is for camera. Tim, Tim.